Bill Stone. Welcome to Giants Vision. My name is Dwayne Kuyper. Sitting next to me is Joe Morgan. Joe, this is Willie McCovey Hall of Fame Day. It's a great crowd. Steve Carlton is pitching. I don't know what more I can say. <laughs> well, you got one Hall of Famer going in later this year, and the other one will be going in as soon as he retires. So it's going to be an awesome day. I don't think you could pitch, pick a better setting to have a guy like Steve Carlton make his first start for the San Francisco Giants on Willie McCovey Day. And as I was telling someone yesterday on NBC, I, this is about the fourth Willie McCovey day I've been to, but there is no one more deserving of having days than Willie McCovey. And this is a special time for both he and the Giants because anytime one of your players is going into the Hall of Fame, that is special. It is a great day, and I'll tell you what, Giants Vision is going to bring to you all of the ceremonies. Uh, what we are going to do right now is we are going to uh, throw it down to the field and by all means, enjoy this uh, wonderful weather and enjoy the fact that this is Willie McCovey Hall of Fame Day. So uh, let's watch all the activities. First of, all, First of all, let me welcome you to welcome Candlestick you Park, Park, the home of the first place San Francisco, San Francisco Giants. Giants. Your presence here today will enable the Giants to surpass their entire season's attendance of a year ago. This means that you're not just coming to see the Giants play the Cardinals or the Giants play the Mets or the Giants play the Dodgers, but you're coming to see the Giants, and that's the way it ought to be. But we're all here today to honor one of the greatest of them all, and this, his Hall of Fame year, Willie McCovey. Many of Willie's close friends, family, and associates are also here, and I'd like to introduce them to you now. First of all, a man whose company helped to co-sponsor the event here today. He's the president of IBM Southwest Marketing Division, Mr. Lou Gray. Willie's first manager with the San Francisco Giants, Bill Rigney. Say hello to Willie's pride and joy, his daughter, Allison McCovey. Willie's mom could not be here today from Alabama, but Willie is well represented in that regard by two ladies that he has referred to often as his San Francisco mothers. They're here today. Please welcome Ruth Stovall and Mrs. John Dudum. Say hello now to a longtime friend and associate of Willie McCovey's, Rocky Dudum. Rocky? <laughs> Willie's friend and attorney, Mr. Hal Silen. He was the owner 
of the Warriors for almost 25 years, and he's been Willie McCovey's friend even longer, Franklin Muley. Another longtime friend of Willie McCovey's, the Speaker of the Assembly, State of California, the Honorable Willie Brown. The man who brought Willie McCovey back to San Francisco in 1977, the owner of the Giants, Bob Lurie. He's the president of the National League and former Giants general manager, Chubb Feeney. From Seal Stadium to Cooperstown, he covered Willie's career for the San Francisco Chronicle, Bob Stevens. I want to direct your attention now to the area in center field where this man is being driven onto the field right now. He's a 1981 inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He's the only man in Major League history to hit three home runs in a game six different times. He won four home run titles three times. He led the National League in RBIs. He won the batting championship in 1939. As a giant, he hit 54 home runs in 1947. He's the only player to hit more than 50 homers in a season and strike out less than 50 times. A lifetime batting average of 312. We're delighted he could be here today. Giants Hall of Famer Johnny Mize. Making its way onto the field is a 1952 Packard with Giants Hall of Famer Monty Irvin. This man had Hall of Fame credentials long before he ever got to the major leagues. In the Giants classic 1951 rush to the pennant, Monty Irvin led the National League with 121 RBIs, hit 24 home runs, compiled a batting average of 312. And yet his longtime Brooklyn Dodger rival Roy Campanella said, as great as he was in that 1951 season, Monty Irvin was twice as good 10 years before that in the old Negro Leagues. He entered baseball's Hall of Fame in 1973, Monty Irvin. It is only appropriate that this man should be arriving from center field because nobody ever played it better in the long history of this game. His plaque at Cooperstown says he entered the Hall of Fame in 1979. But you and I know he went in in 1931, the year he was born. You don't speak of him in terms of statistics or in terms of records. All that need be said is here is number 24.
He's the man of the hour today and the man of the year in 1986. The list of Giants in Baseball's Hall of Fame exceeds those of any other team. And now Willie McCovey's name takes its rightful place among them. The car he's riding in was built in 1955, the year Willie signed to play for the Giants. He played in the 50s. He played in the 60s. He played in the 70s. And he played in 1980. Somehow we thought he would play forever. And now that he's about to be enshrined at Cooperstown, he will. Number 44, Willie McCovey. Ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker today covered baseball here in the Bay Area for 46 years for the San Francisco Chronicle. And if he hasn't seen them all, nobody has. He's here to represent the media and expressing our feelings about Willie McCovey. Here he is, the distinguished baseball writer, Bob Stevens. Thank you, Hank. We got a lot of good speakers, a lot of good ones coming after me, so I'll make this brief. And that should get the first standing ovation of the day. I remember Willie as well as anybody. I saw him break in with his two triples and two singles against Robin Roberts. Roberts made the Hall of Fame, but Willie didn't help him get there. I remember Willie for so much. He was a great base runner. He could go from first to third, second to home, as well as any man who ever lived. I don't remember him getting picked off very often, if really, if ever. He had the stretch of a great big crane. He could scoop up the plays at first base like the type of player he is, where he is now in the Hall of Fame. But I remember Willie mostly for the gentleman that he is. I know that you know that the relationships with the beat writers who cover every day home and road with the players sometimes become strained. I know Willie oftentimes probably would like to have strangled me, but I'm a little guy with glasses and I got age on him. He never kicked on me at all. He was a comfortable, warm interview. He was available all the time. He would expand on anything he wanted to talk about, and he was extremely modest. The only time, in my opinion, that Willie Mays ever approached a little bit beyond the line of modesty was one day when he said, I never thought I was a superstar, but there were years in my career. I think I was the most respected hitter in baseball. He was. Willie, to you I want to say this. That we all know Yankee Stadium was the house that Ruth built. Well, they've built another one since then. It's in upstate New York. It's called Cooperstown. It's built for men like Willie McCovey. He belongs in there, and he's going there. And forever after, for as time as they ever play this game, Willie Mays will live in his new home in Cooperstown. I congratulate you, Willie. You made my job a pleasure. Now, if you excuse me, I got to go to the press box and ruin a few more careers with my lousy scorekeeping. I thank you.
No public ceremony would be complete without someone to represent the government. Actually, he is here today in a dual capacity as Speaker of the Assembly, State of California, and baseball writer for Gentlemen's Quarterly. Here is State Senator, the Honorable Willie Brown. Willie McCovey represents, for those of us in government, the kind of image, the kind of character, and the kind of courage that professional athletes should show for the young people of this nation, and particularly for the black youngsters in the state of California. When we honored Willie McCovey just a few months ago in Sacramento, it was like no other time. Every politician, every elected official wanted to get next to number 44. They knew that he had faced the hardest of throws, the most difficult of tasks, and he had maintained that sterling character all the way through. On his in introduction into the Hall of Fame, those of us who are admirers can only say Mr. McCovey, you've earned the respect of baseball fans everywhere and the envy of politicians forever. Congratulations, number 44. Those outstanding Hall of Fame commemorative booklets you received upon entering the park today were made possible by IBM Corporation. Here this afternoon with a presentation on behalf of Willie McCovey is Mr. Lou W. Gray, president of IBM Southwest Marketing Division. Thank you, Hank. Willie, Mr. Speaker, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, the IBM Corporation is pleased to play a part in today's activities. You know, Candlestick Park brings back many fond memories for Willie McCovey and also for his many, many fans. I'd like to think that another chapter is being added this afternoon on this very special day. We are pleased to have as our guests today 325 children from the Bay Area. And also, Willie, in your name, I'd like to make a, on behalf of the IBM Corporation, a $5,000 donation to the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame for sports equipment for the needy children in the San Francisco area. IBM is pleased not only to be involved in today's activities because of your great accomplishments and great record but also because you represent the true meaning of class and excellence, not only for the Bay Area, but for all of baseball. Congratulations, Willie McCovey. When the Giants moved here from New York in 1958, he was their manager. After watching Willie McCovey break in the following year, he had reason to believe he was about to become an even better manager. He was there 27 years ago at Seal Stadium, and we're delighted he's with us here this afternoon, Willie's first skipper, Bill Rigney. Ladies and gentlemen, all you Oakland A's fans, you know, little did we know, back in 1959, writing Willie McCovey's name in the lineup for his first, first major league game, what the future was going to bring. But I think after that game was over, all of us had some kind of an idea that we were looking at some greatness. And he certainly didn't disappoint us. 
He certainly hasn't disappointed all of you, I know that. I was there to see the first step, the first giant step. And Willie, I'm proud to say that I'll be there in Cooperstown to see the final step into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Our next speaker made the decision to bring up Willie McCovey from Phoenix in 1959. He'll probably tell you that wasn't the toughest choice he ever had to make. But a much more difficult one, and certainly a more controversial one, was the decision in 1965 to keep Willie McCovey and trade Orlando Cepeda. He took a lot of heat over that one, but Willie McCovey, about to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame next month, has vindicated that judgment many times over. Here is former Giants vice president and general manager and now the president of the National League, Mr. Chubb Feeney. Thank you, Hank. Both those decisions turned out to be right, thank goodness. I, too, was here to see Willie's first game. He had many, many more after that. It's going to be my privilege to be in Cooperstown to see Willie inducted with these other great giant players. Congratulations from the National League and best wishes for the rest of your life, Willie. Willie McCovey had two tours of duty with the San Francisco Giants. After he went to San Diego in 1974, it was this man who saw to it that Willie would finish his career in the city where he started when he brought him back to the Giants in 1977. Those who were here to welcome him back that opening day participated in one of the most emotional moments in Giants history. Of course, were it not for this man, we would not have baseball here in San Francisco today. The owner of the San Francisco Giants, Mr. Bob Lurie. Thank, thank you. It's a real thrill and a true honor for me to be able to be here and wish nothing but the best to Willie McCovey. I saw him in Seal Stadium. I've seen him ever since then. He's a great gentleman, a great player. And Willie, congratulations on everything you've accomplished. And I look forward to seeing you in Cooperstown. Thank you. This man had so much respect for Willie McCovey's ability as a hitter that often he would purposely not advance from first to second on a wild pitch for fear that by leaving first base open, opposing teams would then walk McCovey intentionally rather than pitch to him. Of course, opposing pitchers didn't have much desire to pitch to this man either, which helps explain the 1,463 walks he received although he did manage to find time to hit 660 home runs among his more than 3,000 hits. His name says more than any introduction possibly can. Ladies and gentlemen, Willie Mays. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel right now that I'm going to the Hall of Fame myself because playing with a guy like McCovey, it really wasn't that hard because they always seemed to want to pitch to me but not to him. But uh, a guy like McCovey, you just don't know what will happen with him. He could strike out three times a game. He could hit three home run downs a game. But I think it's important that you as fans of San Francisco realize that we have more people in the Hall of Fame than any club in baseball. And and when you can claim that, I think the city should clap themselves and welcome themselves to the ballpark because no other city can claim that. And with 
McCovey, and myself, I know I love San Francisco, and you know that McCovey loves San Francisco because he's back in a uniform for a long time. Thank you very much. Six years ago this very day, Willie McCovey went to the plate for the final time in his major league career. A career that spanned 22 years and touched four different decades. When Willie came to bat for the last time, it was, ironically, at Dodger Stadium. And on his last swing of the bat, he did what he had done so many times before. He knocked in a run. And in this case, he tied up the ball game. As he left the field for the final time to a tremendous ovation, I can assure you that if there was a dry eye in the house, it wasn't mine. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, number 44, Willie McCovey. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, thank you very much. We have a ball game to play, you know. You know, you don't go from Mobile to Cooperstown without a little help along the way. I got a lot of help, and the people here behind me represent the people who helped me the most. I'd like to start with my parents, Frank and Esther, because without them, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> represent my mother, and I had to get two of them because she's so great. I know Hank has already introduced these people, but Mrs. Ruth Stovall and Mrs. John Dudum. My best friend for over 25 years and my brother Rocky Dudum. Of course, my lovely daughter Allison Baseball is such a great game and such a great game to play. But unfortunately, there are finances involved. And the guy that helped me through the years with all my finances is my lawyer, Harold Silent. Next, I want to thank you fans of the Bay Area for adopting me as one of your favorite sons. Chubb Feeney represents the Giants front office that I started with. We even made him president of the league. Chubb was one of the best general managers I've ever had to deal with and one of the nicest people I've met in this game. Franklin Muley told me if I said that he'd throw up. 
but I mean every word of it. And speaking of Franklin Muley, what can you say about Franklin Muley? As a matter of fact, what can anybody say about Franklin Muley? <laughs> you know, although I'm standing here today on top of the world, a lot of you would remember that it wasn't always this way. Some of my early years was very rocky at best. But when I needed a shoulder to lean on, Franklin was always there. Thank you, Franklin. During those rocky years, there was a couple of writers who took a few cheap shots. And I probably had them coming. But the one guy who could always find something good to say about you even though you might have been stinking up the ballpark. And he's in my Hall of Fame, Bob Stevens. I can stand here for two hours talking about Willie Mays and the things he meant to me. But all I'd like to say is, Mays, it was an honor just wearing the same uniform you wore and having my name alongside yours out there on that fence. The word class is sometimes overused, but if there ever was a person in baseball with class, and they probably wrote the word for him, my good friend Monty Irvin. When I walked into the clubhouse on that July 30th day in 1959, the manager walked up to me and asked me how I feel. I said, fine. I mean, what else was I gonna say? Hey, Bill, I'm a little tired. Give me about a week. <laughs> I said, fine. And he said, good, because you're in there today and you're hitting third. And you know whose spot that is. I'm moving Mays up to second place. So go out and do something. So I went four for four. My first major league manager, Bill Rigney. My career almost ended after the 1976 season. But when the, the man who allowed me to come back home and enjoy what probably was the best year of my career in 1977 and retire with dignity in 1980, my friend Bob Lurie. I would like to give special thanks to the IBM Corporation for sponsoring this day, and to Willie Brown, who had to play second fiddle to me today. And Steve Carlton, welcome to San Francisco. You couldn't end your career in a better place. Thank you all for coming and enjoy the game.